So hello everyone. Uh, this is my talk from TabConf last week. So I will first start with how like rollups work on Bitcoin, and then uh, add how we can add BitVM on top of it. Uh, so yeah, we will start with rollups, uh, state diffs, forced transaction, and some failure cases, and then we'll go into how we can add bridge on top of this rollup with BitVM. So yeah. As you all know, rollups are off-chain solutions that process transactions and uh, puts them as bundles. So Bitcoin rollup would look like this. So we would have like bundles of transactions that are on uh, Bitcoin. This is from our like test net, uh, and that little square is a bundle of transactions. But there's an issue. Uh, that like Ethereum blobs, Celestia has like huge uh, block sizes, but Bitcoin has a limited block size, which is like four megabytes per 10 minutes. And my take is like, since Bitcoin is a limited resource, we should use this as efficient as we can. So let's say a minimal transaction has a sender, receiver, amount, and a signature. We can say it's like total of 100 and 12, uh, 12 bytes. This will lead to like 60 transactions per second with the given that Bitcoin has four megabytes per 10 minutes. But with ZK proofs, with SNARKs, we can compress more. We can get rid of signatures because like we can prove that those signatures were there uh, and we can get rid of them with a single ZK proof. And then we can go to like 140 TPS. We can compress even more uh, we can like, if we saw a sender from like old transactions, we can uh, map it to an ID and use like eight bytes to that. And we can get rid of the uh, all like 20 bytes. And we can get to like 270 transactions per second. We can even compress more. Let's say like Alice sends Bob some funds, Bob sends some funds to Charlie. We don't need to show the balance change of Bob because it's it's not changed it. It's, it haven't changed it. So we can get rid of like all the transactions, uh, all the state tips about Bob as well. So our rollup would look like this. It will have a state diff and a snark proof uh, with that. Uh, okay, like 207 CPS won't scale Bitcoin to the billions, but we can also build stateless layers on top of this rollup, uh, which for example, like int max. Uh, so yeah, who's going to decide on ordering? Uh, for now, we will start with centralized sequencer, uh, but it can be decentralized in the future. But the solution of centralized sequencer is forced transactions. Uh, this is easy in, on Ethereum rollups, but it also can be implemented on Bitcoin rollups as well. So we, now, our snark proofs must include all these forced transactions. This way, like our rollup maintains Bitcoin-level censorship resistance through forced transactions. So this is how it will look like on Bitcoin. We would have like forced transactions, these are like in red, and all of our snark proof should refer to a block, and let's say in this block six, that proof refers to block one, which means it has to include all these forced transactions. So yeah, we have a failure case. What if the prover stops and there's no snark proof referring to any forced transactions? Let's say our blockchain is like this, and at block six, our prover stop, like our sequencer stop, and we cannot generate any proofs anymore. In that case, we can solve this failure case with like uh, having a fallback to only forced transactions. So now, from now on, only forced transactions would uh, would be like valid. So this is like basically how rollups work. Uh, as you can see here, we can have a ZK proof of our rollups latest state by just looking at Bitcoin's block. So this is really important. Like we would scan from block one, from the Genesis block, and we would verify those snark proofs and apply the state diff and get to the latest state root and then apply, uh, do the ne next thing for the next block. And we can get to the latest state root of our rollup in a succinct way. So the next topic is how we can build a bridge on top of this. 
<coughs> Before going into Bridge, I would like to like, tell you about BitVM2, which is a primitive of BitVM Bridges. So BitVM2 is a new paradigm. Let's say we have a Bitcoin script that can verify a ZK proof, uh, but the script is really huge. Like in the BitVM repository, it's now like one gigabyte to verify a gross 16 proof, which is huge. It doesn't fit into a single transaction. It doesn't even fit into 200 transactions. Uh, but what we can do is we can optimistically verify this ZK proof. So let's say we split this, uh, this gross 16 verifier script into chunks, where we commit to every intermediate step. And what we can have is like in a single disprove transaction, anyone can disprove an invalid proof. So let's say our proof is correct, uh, our proof is incorrect, uh, and Z0 is correct, this chunk would be invalid. So anyone can easily disprove our proof using this chunk, not the whole script. So this is basically how it works. The prover like puts a collateral, let's say it's two BTC, and also prover commits to every intermediate step. Right now we have like uh, kind of 500 intermediate steps. So in the next uh, UTXO, we would have an address that is a taproot address that has like 500 spending paths. Each of them can be used to disprove any chunks. So let's say some part is incorrect. Let's say the second part is incorrect. Anyone could show that this is incorrect and send this disprove transaction. But the issue is these disprove transactions are four megabytes. Uh, so it's like non-standard in Bitcoin transactions. Uh, you cannot easily send four megabyte transactions. You would have an agreement with a miner and like, let's say like, if I gave you this amount, can you like mine this huge transaction? But it is doable and all this script is verified via like Bitcoin nodes. If in one week, if there is no disprove transactions, the prover can, using this spending path, can take the money. So this way, that means if there's no disprove transaction in a week, then the proof is correct. So this is basically how BTM2 works. Does anybody like have a question on this? Uh, I can get into like how the proof commits to these intermediate steps if you want. Is the connection generated before uh, the execution of the uh, first begin? Yeah, so like, uh, this prover first shows that like, I have this two BTC UTX, so I want to use this to prove something, let's say. Then prover would generate uh, public keys for these like Lampert signatures. These are these these to let prover commit to intermediate steps. Uh, and then then everything is fine. Like prover can prove anything whenever it wants. But we need to also generate the verifier key, verifying key for this proof, and then embed that verifying key into this uh, BitVM, into this like this proof script. So we would generate the, oh sorry, we would generate the whole uh, verifier script, we would split it, and then these disproof scripts would have the like Lampert verifiers for these commitments. So that way, operator cannot lie. Like operator says, if I said like Z0 here, operator cannot lie and has to use the same value here in this discrete script. So it's like generated in the setup. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, this report is upgraded with the new Bridger or the, the original one because the uh, Bitcoin network is not like this one, it's not the uh, state uh, network. Yes. It's not the UTXO. Yes. Actually, we cannot just upgrade the, yes. the final state. We need to pick the, the Yes. Network. So 
Yeah, there's no state in uh, Bitcoin, but we can introduce states with uh, one-time signatures. So how it works is like, the basic prim primitive is like Lampert signatures. So it's like this. Prover generates two random pre-images. Uh, let's say one of, one, of, one of them is pre-image zero, and the other one is pre-image one. Operator, like the prover in here, prover doesn't tell anybody about these pre-images, but only tells the hashes of them. Uh, so this is called like the public key of this Lambert, sig Lambert signature. And we, what we can have is we can have a Bitcoin script that checks these uh, input pre-image and determine if it's the pre-image zero or pre-image one. So it will, it will be like, let's say, this is the input of our script. So we will have op f op hash and we would have our hash one and op equal verify if it's equal we would have one in here, or else the same thing goes here. So this is basically the Bitcoin script that verifies a Lampert signature. It gets the pre-image as an input, and let's say in this case, we put zero. So it will skip this op if, go, it will go to this op else, and it will hash the pre-image. It should be a hash zero. And we would also push the stack to the hash zero, and we will check if, them, if they are equal. If they are equal, we will put the zero on top of the stack. So this way, operator, like let's say, reveals all the pre-images. We, we do this for every bit, every bit of the input, every bit of the intermediate steps. And in this transaction, operator reveals some pre-images. Let's say for a bit, operator reveals pre-image one. Remember, like operator has random pre-images for every bit. So in this case, you can use that pre-image to execute these disprove scripts. If operator reveals both primitives of a single bit, then it's this operator's fault because that means a single intermediate value in here can have like two different values and it will, it will definitely fail in some of the disprove scripts. So this is basically how we can have states across UTXOs. The advanced version of this is Winternet signatures, uh, which is more compact in terms of Bitcoin script, which is like more easy. So this takes like a total of, let's say here is we have 20 bytes, we have 20 bytes. So this takes at least 40 bytes to verify a single bit. We, we can, with Winternet, we can have like 26 bytes per, per bit. But I can go into it into later. So this is our like primitive to verify a zk proof on Bitcoin. How we can build bridge on top of it? Uh, so this is like the basic idea of bridge. So a deposit look like this. Alice puts. Uh, their bridge funds to N of N multisig. Uh, 
at the at the deposit time, we will have all these pre-signatures that is required for us, and then if at least one of these signers deletes their key, then the bridge is safe. So this is called like key deletion covenant. Uh, and in the deposit time, operator puts up some collateral. So let's say this is two BTC. This is to pay like this proof transaction. Because remember those disproved transactions are four megabytes and it's really like hard to pay for that. So operator puts some some collateral. Then operator also reveals these winter needs public keys or like Lampert signature public keys. Then everyone, every signer in here can generate these scripts, can generate this address and all these verifiers would sign this reimbursed transaction. And then one, they delete their keys. So the bridge fund stays in N of N and it can only be spent with this signature. And at the time of withdrawal, let's say Bob wants to withdraw, uh, operator pays Bob 10 BTC. And after operator pays the 10 BTC, operator proves that like, he paid the withdrawal. With that proof, operator uh, post the proof and all the intermediate steps on Bitcoin. And if there is no disproval in one week, then that means the proof is correct. And now anyone can send the uh, operator can send the reimbursed transaction. If the proof is incorrect, anyone can disprove. Since they will have like incentive to get this to BTC, they can like easily disprove. So any questions on this? Why one week? Why one week? Yeah, it's kind of like a parameter of the bridge. Uh, we can have like one week for disapproval. It's in, in Ethereum rollups, optimistic rollups, it's given one week. Uh, so it's for example. We can give like one day, but the issue is if the proof is incorrect, uh, you would have to send the disproof transaction for the security of bridge or the operator will like steal money. But sending this, this proof transaction is hard. Uh, it's like four megabytes and the standard transactions are below 400 kilobytes. So what you would have to do is like email some miners like, hey, there's some uh, transactions I want to mine. And can you mine for me? And then they would get, the, get that four megabyte transactions and they will try to mine, but like in Bitcoin, it's like, not deterministic, so they would have to try to mine it. So we should give some time for miners to mine this. It's kind of like if you if we give seven weeks, seven days, uh, that will be like uh, seven days times that will be one thousand blocks. Okay, there will be 1,000 blocks on that week period. So if we have like at least 0.1% oh, of the hash rate is honest and they want to mine, uh, then you can send this proof transaction. Because it's also an attack vector. Let's say a malicious operator wants to steal some funds from bridge. They can go to miners and say like, hey, don't mine my disproof transaction. Uh, but if we have like at least 0.1 percentage of min uh, miners' power, then we can send to this proof transaction. So it's also like a security parameter. Oh, go on. Yeah. So is the box uh, or the transactions? Oh. Uh, so. Remember, like in the time of deposit, uh, we would generate these, we would pre-compute these, and we would sign these. So all these signers know these. So this zk verifier will have hard-coded uh, input, like let's say public input, which refers to this TX ID. So what we can have is this TX ID. How we can like get to this TX ID with this TX ID? The solution is. Remember, uh, our rollup uh, has 
all the data written on Bitcoin. So we can, what we can do is like we can get to the latest state of our rollup by just looking at Bitcoin. So in this proof, it will prove this. In Sutrea, someone made a deposit with this TX ID. Let's say this is the fifth deposit. And the fifth withdrawal is this UTXO. Uh, and op I paid this UTXO. So the proof will state this. So proof will also verify the state of the rollup. That's how we can correlate, correlate between deposits and withdrawals. So like fifth deposit goes to fifth withdrawal. Uh, so when you withdraw the fifth, uh, withdraw happens, is, the, is that what happens? Is around the fifth deposit or happens? Say, say what? So, I mean the, the, so there's a, uh, the fifth deposit happens first. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so it's like first in, first out. Uh, we have like deposits coming, let's say. And this is first deposit, this is second, this is third. And we would have, yeah, I want to have to draw it back. And we would have withdrawals. So we've been, we know the TX ID of this. We store them in a smart contract, let's say in Citrea. And whenever a new withdrawal happens, uh, Bob, the withdrawer, says like, this is my UTXO of the withdrawal. So, and puts like burns 10 BTC on Citrea. Let's say this is withdrawal UTXO ID. So, we know that who pays this withdrawal should get this TX ID. We match them. Does, uh, does every deposit that you withdraw have, have the same amount? Yeah, they, they, have, they all have the same amount. Uh, they all have like 10 BTC. But, so we know like it's a huge, normal users won't be using this bridge. Uh, we would have like atomic swaps this is for only like liquidity providers. So yeah, everyone, every this ha should have the same unit, same denominator. So this bridge design has a lot of problems. Like we can't trust a single operator. Then we can have multiple operators that does the same. But if we have multiple operators that need to ha deposit like two BTC per deposit, this is not efficient. And like what if Bitcoin fees go high and two BT is not enough anymore to send to this proof transaction? Who would send it? Like operators can steal money. And if multiple operators are malicious, we need to put multiple disproof transactions on chain, which are like four megabytes, which fill the whole block of Bitcoin. And how does the snark proof know the state of the rollup. To know the state of the rollup, you should know the state of Bitcoin. But it's like really uh, kind of impossible to prove the uh, light client of Bitcoin, long chain of Bitcoin, non interactively. And who is this N of N? So, yeah, we will st start one by one and try to solve all of them. We can trust a single operator, so we can have multiple operators. Let's say we have operator here and the second operator here. And this can go to like 100 operators. And whoever pays the withdrawal first is get to send to a start transaction. So this withdrawal is a special type of signature. Operator creates a, let's say Bob creates a zero value UTXO. And it will send SIGESH single anyone can pay signatures. This means like, I want 9.9 .9 BTC at the output, but I don't care who provides that. Anyone can pay. So since Bitcoin will ensure that this C2XL will not double spend, these operators can 
uh, like race can race between themselves to pay this withdrawal. So, yeah, whoever pays the withdrawal will send the asset transaction, and if there is no uh, disclosure transaction, they will get the reimbursed transaction. You can see that now we signed two transactions. The N of N signs two more transactions. If we have like 100 operators, these N of N would sign 100 transactions per deposit. This is not an issue now, but it will. Okay, the second issue is if every operator needs to have like two BTC per, per deposit, this is not efficient. If we have like five BTC, now it's like 10 BTC staked for a 10 BTC deposit. This is not efficient as well. So what we can have is we can have operators collateral as a chain of transactions. Uh, so this, this way, we can use the same collateral again and again and again. If, if and at any point, if there is an incorrect proof, we would use this 2BTC as an input of the disproved transaction, and we would break the chain of transactions. So let's say operator made a one withdrawal, which is fine, the proof is correct. And after one week, operator can send it to another like operator's collateral transaction. And we, we can use this collateral uh, for the next withdrawal. If the proof is incorrect, it will go to this proof transaction and the chain of uh, collateral is now broken. So this way, we can reuse a collateral several times. The other question is, what if fees increase and 2BTC is not enough? Uh, so actually, I don't know the exact solution of this problem, uh, but I did some analysis on Bitcoin fees. So what I did is I looked at the maximum of minimum total fees for like a window of time. Let's say if we give one day to this proof transaction, if we looked at the historic fees of the Bitcoin uh, for a, like one day window time, there, there has been a one day where the total fees are at least 7 BTC for every block on that one day. So that means if we give one day for the super transaction, the operator's collateral should be at least 7 BTC. If we give 14 days, now the collateral can be like 0 0.04 BTC. But this assumes that like Bitcoin fees will not go really high on the future and stay, that, stay there. Uh, so yeah, these are like bare minimums. And also, even if the operator's collateral doesn't pay for the disproved transaction, since these operators are competing with each other, they may be like willing to uh, disprove an operator to have a more chance to pay the next withdrawal. So there's also incentive between operators to pay the disproved transaction. So yeah, can between, between bridges beat federated bridges? This is like rapid BTC. And it has like a total supply of 150,000 uh, BTC. And the total burn was like 240,000 BTC. So this is like huge numbers. It currently has like $10 billion TVL. Uh, so yeah, let's say bridge denominator is 10 BTC and Rapid BTC was around like for like four years, so it's like 400,000 BTC. So our bridge should have a throughput of 400,000 BTC in four years. And let's say an operator takes seven days. So operator can use a collateral in seven days period, periods. So this means a single operator's collateral can satisfy only 200 withdrawals in this four year period. So if we want to have like 400,000, we should have at least 200 operators. This assumes that every operator is honest and willing to pay a withdrawal. But if you want to have like more trust minimized bridge design, we would need to have 2,000 operators. And these 2,000 operators are having a collateral timeline chain of transactions and if half of them are malicious, it's impossible to disprove all of them. 
So there will be some operators that can steal money from bridge. So that means that this is not, not a safe construction at all. A simple solution would be having bridge denom denominator 100 BTC. That means in four years, we can have 200 withdrawals, but we need at least 20 operators. So if you multiply it with 10, because we want some trust minimization, we need to have like 200 operators. And now like we can disprove uh, half of them in 1,000 blocks in seven days. So it's not a big issue right now. So how does snark proof know the state of our rollup? Uh, well, it turns out it's really hard to do this. It's called like Bitcoin light client design. Uh, there are some solutions. There is some solution uh, on Robin's paper. Uh, I can get into that. Uh, it's like some kind of crypto economical solution. There are some solutions which are permissioned. Let's say we have like 100 watchtowers and every watchtower can put a longest chain uh, proof. It's kind of like an interactive proof. Uh, and the operator now needs to put a longer, longer chain than the watchtower's challenge. So it's like kind of like a challenge response. Or we can, have, we can solve it with huge on-chain costs. I can get into this if you want. Uh, my slides are kind of over. So who is this N of N? It's a key deletion covenant, but if we would have like covenants on Bitcoin, it will solve this. And that's all. If you have questions, then. thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the API and the, the last one and the yes. Bitcoin 2 and the bridge. Um, how to combine this two systems and uh, yeah. um, how do you deploy it uh, separately or how do you combine this into a one chain thing? What's the point? So, Bitcoin is a, like a primitive to make a bridge. Uh, so we are using BitVM to build our own bridge between Citrea and Bitcoin. And anyone can build bridges with that. Like there are some teams building Ethereum bridges. There are some teams building to their own rollups or own side chains. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of different thing. But the bridge should know the state of the rollup to be able to prove the withdrawals. That's the like, only connection. Any questions? So, so it's kind of uh, a scenario for a start that there is a chain supposed to So it's currently only growth 16 and flung, but it seems like we will continue with growth 16. The reason is, uh, in this transaction, operator prover needs to commit to the proof itself as well. So the growth 16 is like smallest proof we can have. Uh, and that's why like we cannot, it's really hard to build Starks on top of this, let's say, because Starks can go up to like 40 uh, kilobytes. I know like some people are working on doing this with Starks, but it, it needs to have like some tricks. For example, like first putting the Stark proof on Bitcoin and then proving using that, etc. So like a little bit tricky to do it with like longer proofs. Any questions? Well, thank you.